I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I would like to welcome you to our Roman pilgrimage, where we'll be examining the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Today we'll be climbing up the sacred groves of the Adventine Hill, up to our first stational church on this Ash Wednesday. The church is called Santa Sabina and was one of the first homes where the Christians began to gather as a community in the early days of Rome. The present church is in the hands of the Dominican Fathers, and it's here on this day, Ash Wednesday, that the Holy Father goes up the Adventine Hill, up from the Circus Maximus, the site of so many martyrdoms. And in this church, the Holy Father himself will receive ashes and will bestow ashes to the Roman faithful. This marks the beginning of the Lenten season, a time where all of us prepare for spiritual combat against our three principal enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The Pope himself receives ashes, reminding us that he himself is the servant of the servants of God and is called upon to serve the people of God as we all are. As we prepare to enter into the mystery of this Lenten season, let us go up the Adventine Hill to the Church of Santa Sabina. Santa Sabina, a place of solitude, a place of quiet up on the hill overlooking the Circus Maximus. This is the day of ashes, Ash Wednesday. The ashes are taken from the palms that were burned the previous year on Palm Sunday. Today we are reminded, remember, O man, that thou art dust. The expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden and the promise of the great Redeemer, Christ the Lord, who would be sent to redeem all of mankind. Santa Sabina, which is our first church, is probably one of the most important churches worth visiting in the entire city of Rome. The church is truly remarkable, not only for its splendid architecture, but also because of its rich history. Here, on the Aventine Hill, one can easily evoke images of Saint Dominic and countless other Dominican saints who lived here, including the great Saint Thomas Aquinas. From the adjacent garden known as the Park of the Orange Trees, one is given a splendid view of the Basilica of St. Peter in the distance. The Santa Sabina, which is up on the Adventine Hill, was a place of asylum for refugees, even in pre-Christian times. From the garden, one can clearly see a church which dates back to the fifth century and which has scarcely changed in appearance since that time. The large windows, visible even from the outside, are made of selenite, not glass, and are set in a pierced stone. According to the 6th century Passion, which relates to us the life and the martyrdom of St. Sabina, we know certain things. She was believed to have been a widow who was converted to the Christian faith by her servant girl named Serapia. This little girl, who was originally from Syria, by her prayers, fasting, and example, attracted Sabina to the Christian faith. Serapia frequently helped her persecuted brethren in the Christian faith, and for this was eventually arrested and was martyred under the Emperor Hadrian on July 29th in the year 125 AD. She was condemned to be brutally beaten to death by the local Roman prefect Helpidius. Sabina, her mistress, accompanied her on her journey to martyrdom and then buried her. Less than a month later, Sabina herself, now recognized as a Christian, was threatened and bribed by the same prefect to try to get her to renounce her faith. But she herself was to receive her own crown of martyrdom on August 29th in the same year, 125, by beheading. She leads us and inspires us on on this special day to pursue the path trod by the Lord Jesus. She was eventually buried next to her servant girl, Serapia, and these two Christians now sleep in death under the high altar. Extended details concerning her life are somewhat sketchy, but very on we hear reference to this church as the Titulus Sancte Sabina on the Adventine Hill. The Titulus, or the title, refers to one of the earliest meeting places of the Christians, 
which took place in a home. Normally, it was the home of the owner, who gave their name, hence the term titulus, or title. And so the church becomes known by the title of the woman or the individual who owned the home. It is quite probable that the house of Sabina herself was used as this gathering place for the Christians during the early period to celebrate the Eucharist. The Basilica of Santa Sabina is referred to by the Romans as the gem of the Aventine and truly is one of the finest of the ancient Roman churches. There can be no doubt that it was built over the site of a very early and large Roman house. Remains of this house can be seen through a grating near the entryway of the door. The church itself was built by one named Peter of Illyria, which we know more today as Dalmatia. He was a priest of the Diocese of Rome, and the church was constructed somewhere between the years 422 and 432. It was Pope Gregory the Great who made this Domus Dei, or House of God, the scene of the Lenten station for Ash Wednesday. We know that during Gregory's life, he actually sought refuge here at this church when trying to escape from one of the great devastating plagues which struck Rome during his time. We know that the basilica had to be rebuilt considerably again during the year 834 during the pontificate of Pope Eugenius II. There was also a very skillful restoration carried out by Munoz in our own time from 1914 to 1919, which happily restored the church to its original 5th century beauty, along with some 9th century additions. There are a number of things worthy to note here. First of all, Santa Sabina is the headquarters of the Dominican order. Pope Honorius III, in the year 1218, whose family's palace was close by this church, gave the church to St. Dominic. St. Dominic lived here till his death in 1221. The Master General of the Dominican Order resides here. This is also the site where St. Thomas Aquinas lived. The great angelic doctor taught here also. This was the spot where the original Dominican College was believed to have stood. Also of interest is the great wooden door on the outside, which dates all the way back to the very early 5th century. It has one of the earliest depictions of our Lord being crucified that we have in all of Western art. As one enters the church, one can sense the spirit of reverence and prayer created by the 26 magnificent Selenite windows that suffice the entire nave with a warm light. There are also 24 fluted Corinthian columns of Parian marble which were taken from nearby temples. These columns support rounded arches, the first rounded arches used in the city of Rome, rather than simply having the arches simply rise to touch a horizontal architrave. The flat ceiling above is made of wood covered with stars meant to mirror the heavens. The ceiling was restored in 1936 to the original 5th century style.